Ciccone is almost at a kilometre to go. The first part of the climb is over. The initial hurt. Now it's about brutal pain. One kilometre to go for the Italian. Now it starts to get really hard. Pedrero still staying there. Ciccone has 930 metres to go to take another win this season. Ciccone has already got two wins. Here goes Vengegaard now as he just pedals away from the rest of the field. Yates tries to respond. Vengegaard goes into cruise mode and starts to ride away. Ciccone through the fans, 872 metres. He gets a little bit more into the legs. 1,000 metres to go for the leader of this Dauphiné, who has absolutely brutally beaten everybody over this last week. It's a fight for survival on the slopes. Vengegaard is climbing superbly on this 19% gradient. It's almost like a little mini Puy de Dom. Yates isn't giving up. And still Vengegaard with a little advantage. Don't forget, though, 760 metres to go for Ciccone. There's Ciccone. A little bit further back, we can start to see the favourites coming. Takes the outside line, so it's not too steep. Yates is not giving in on coming back to Vengegaard. He's closing this gap slowly. It's not the same acceleration of yesterday. 14% now for the leader. Yates looks around. Ben O'Connor is still there. It looks like the top three in this race are going to finish relatively close together on this mountain. It takes us to the top of La Bastille. We're above Grenoble, which, of course, first awarded the yellow jersey of the Tour de France 104 years ago in this city. And the rider who wants to defend his Tour de France title is again getting rid of all the favourites in the Dauphiné. Just under 500 metres to go for the Italian Giulia Ciccone. What is the gap? We look back now to Vengegaard. The yellow jersey should come round the corner. It looks like Ciccone is still holding a good advantage. 15%. As Jonas Vengegaard says, I just like to race my bike. He has the same philosophy as Tadej Pogaccia. He looks strong and he looks ready. He's going to win this Dauphiné. And he's going to send a message to all his other rivals. Game on for July. Ciccone is there. Vengegaard comes round that really horrible little turn. It's so steep in that corner. Has Ciccone managed to take this? There's the virtual classification on the right-hand side. At the moment, Vengegaard would win this Dauphiné by 2.33. Julia Ciccone is almost at the top. There is the next group of riders behind Vengegaard and Yates. Guillaume Martin. And sorry, O'Connor as well. Hindley goes. Again, Hindley going late on the climb. Just trying to use his energy wisely. Ciccone is 150 metres from a wonderful victory in the Dauphiné. And he dropped his sunglasses. His usual salute isn't going to happen. I think he dropped them off the helmet there. This next turn is really steep. Look at it. Earlier on today, I watched a young kid try and walk down this corner, and it was almost impossible. Well, Ciccone hasn't got the sunglasses to throw to the crowd today, but it looks like he's going to take the victory. Julia Ciccone of Trek Sega Fredo uh, comes up to the top of La Bastille, 20 kilometers solo. His 10th win of his career and the third win of a great season. Behind him now, Jonas Vengegaard has ridden away from all the other favourites. It's not going to be the victory today, but Jonas Vengegaard is now ready for the Tour de France.
July beckons. The form is so impressive.